Uh, the BBC can still not bring itself to call the terrorists of Hamas terrorists. That's to be expected. Navara Media, a radical far-left extremist publication in the UK, has had it, members of its staff tweeting support of the massacre of Israeli men, women and children. That's what we expected. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, you want to check it out. You disgusting moron. So guys, we attack BBC journalists. Guys, let's get straight into this. Welcome to the Douglas Murray channel. Today, we're diving into a critical and controversial discussion featuring Douglas Murray. The debate involves media reactions, freedom of speech, and the rise of anti-Semitism. Stay tuned and join the conversation. Good afternoon. It's so good to be with or, or you, morning, Julia. Morning to you, I think, where you are in the States. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wish it was under happier circumstances. There's a lot to get to, a lot to talk about. Um, I just want to ask you, first of all, about... You know, you've written, of course, as so many people have, about what the horrific events... Uh, in Israel at the weekend and subsequent events in the aftermath as well. Um, in terms of people's reaction, the people on the left in particular, uh, the BBC and others, the reaction to the atrocity, the brutality committed by Hamas terrorists in Israel, um, what, what do you think it tells us about them? Douglas Murray criticises the media's response to recent terror attacks in Israel. He highlights a perceived bias in reactions, especially from left-wing outlets. Why do you think certain media outlets avoid labelling these acts as terrorism? Well, it tells us that, they, that there's a certain faction of people in uh, countries like Britain, where I actually am at the moment, uh, who are uh, simple supporters of genocide. And uh, it's as straightforward as that. Um, there have been protests throughout the UK in support of Hamas. And I list them actually in this in my cover piece in this week's Spectator. Um, uh, somebody telling a crowd at a, at a pro Hamas rally in Brighton, for instance, that the operations, as you call it, on Saturday in Israel were beautiful. Beautiful. Imagine that. Murray asserts that some Whoa. protests in the UK are openly supportive of Hamas, labeling such factions as genocidal. He recounts shocking statements made during these rallies. Should freedom of speech protect such extreme expressions, or are there limits? The, uh, um, the gunning down of men and women at a music festival, the raping of women beside the bodies of their dead friends. This was beautiful, according to people on the British streets. Uh, we had demonstrations outside the Israeli embassy in London by people before Israel had even made any counterattack to the atrocities against the uh, Israeli people on Saturday. I said uh, um, earlier this week, sometimes a flare goes up and you see exactly where everyone is. And the atrocities of Saturday provided such a moment. Uh, the BBC can still not bring itself to call the terrorists of Hamas terrorists. That's to be expected. Navara Media, a radical far-left extremist publication in the UK, has had it, members of its staff tweeting support of the massacre of Israeli men, women and children. That's what we expected. Had Jeremy Corbyn become Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the Navara Media would have been his press unit. These uh, anti-Semites, racists, genocidists are all now in plain view. They celebrate the massacre of Jews. We knew they were there. They've confirmed it. He describes disturbing reactions on British streets, where some praised horrific acts of violence. Murray contrasts this with hypothetical support for anti-Muslim violence, which he believes would be swiftly condemned. Are there double standards and how different forms of violence are addressed? Yeah. What do we do about it, though? Because, you know, you and I are both champions of uh, freedom of speech. I've always been of the view that if people think something as horrific as this, I think it's better that we know it so we can tackle it, so we can challenge it, and we know what people really are, what is in their hearts, what is in their heads. But how do we tackle this? Because it seems to me that this is something relatively new on the left. I, I, this isn't how... This isn't what I associated with the left before. This is the sort of views we associated with the right uh, until oh, only a few years ago. Discussing anti-Semitism, Murray notes its ability to shift across political spectrums and cultures. He particularly criticizes attempts to contextualize recent brutalities. 
How can societies effectively combat such deep-seated prejudices? Yes, well, of course, anti-Semitism shapeshifts. It's one of the extraordinary things about it. I've written about this a lot in the past. It can shift from right to left, left to right, extreme right to extreme left, and vice versa. Um, it can be religious, it can be ethnic hatred, it can be all sorts of things. It can be hatred of the Jews for not having a state and being stateless. It can be hatred of the Jews for having a state and having statehood. Um, uh, so, so, yes, th this is just, I mean, the virulent form of anti-Semitism we see in our time in the West is, is al almost always really from the radical left uh, um, and, uh, and, and increasingly on the, the left and, and, of course, um, among the Muslim community, very sadly. Uh, you know, this, these, these, these last few days, uh, we have seen Muslim organizations again try to justify what has happened, try to put it in context, always that, put it in context as if there's a context in which the decapitation of some of the 40 babies killed in, in a single kibbutz in Israel uh, must be understood. Um, you, you know, the, 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 these people who, who, who say these things, who try to add this context, uh, uh, many of them are simply outing themselves at the moment as supporters of Hamas. And it isn't actually a freedom of speech issue. You know, for a, f a few years ago, um, a, uh, a, a maniac lone wolf gunman in New Zealand, a disgusting man, um, uh, went into a mosque and massacred uh, some Muslims praying. A, lo a lot of people, a lot of innocent people. And if in the aftermath of that there had been protests outside New Zealand embassies around the world supporting that gunman, oh, the Met Police and others would have stepped in within a second. They would have yeah. been prosecuted in no time. And you know what? That would have been correct. Because it is actually a crime in the UK, as it is in other countries, to support and glorify terror. Glorification yeah. of terror is a crime under the 2006 Terrorism Act in the UK. You're not allowed to support Al-Qaeda and be free. You're not allowed to support ISIS and be free. You are not allowed to support Hamas, which is a prescribed terrorist organization in the UK, and be free. So as I say in The Spectator this week, I want the people who are supporting Hamas openly, including people who are leaders of Hamas, who we know are leaders of Hamas in the UK, to be arrested, to be prosecuted, to be imprisoned, to, I think, like ISIS, have their passports withdrawn, be made stateless. If they wish to live in the Gaza, they should do. They can take their chances there. Britain doesn't want or need them. Murray calls for legal action against those openly supporting Hamas, a designated terrorist organization in the UK. He argues that the glorification of terrorism should be met with severe penalties. Should laws on supporting terrorism be strictly enforced? If you've seen this video, you understand that I actually showing clips of Gaza and Think of it, like, it's sad. I, I won't say it's not, but it's sad. I honestly feel like it was up to me. The world should never happen. Like, how much should I respect him? How much should I respect herself and not strike first? Like, Israel, Israel comeback was insane. And, bro, it was harsh. I also have to blame Israel for their retaliation. Because, to think of it, if someone kills my brother i will not just go after the person go after his family and this is me being honest like th there's no way you can trick your hand in my eyes and i i won't plug out your eyes like i feel if you if you you are ready to push a man to the wall you should be ready for the consequences and i will say most muslims support hamas and this is me being honest i have i have muslim friends and i talk to them and they, they have this excuse that Hamas is fighting a war and the war did not just start October 7th and if I want to be honest okay let's say the war was low key and there was nobody throwing rockets at each other like Hamas increased the scale of the war and this is what people should be honest about and people should actually tackle Hamas and not just tackle Israel. I don't know who is funding this new station to make them paint Israel as the bad guy and make people forget about what Hamas did. I really don't know. Like, the way they are posting clips of Gaza, people in Gaza are seeing things like... You see, I, I, I don't get me wrong. I understand, what Gaza, I understand what people in Gaza are going through. Like, it's heartbreaking. I really don't want to be in their shoes. 
I really don't want to be in the shoes. But like, I'll be honest, for us to tackle this, we need to focus on Hamas. Like, these are the guys who started. I really don't see reasons why a logical thinking person will support Hamas. Like, them putting Gaza in this war and running away from Gaza is just heartbreaking. Like, they mean the people to suffer. I always believe that Gaza should be given aid. If they are giving aid to Gaza, they are indirectly kind of funding Hamas. But in fact, that they pay people for killing Jews and it's just heartbreaking. Like, you seen a state where you are being paid to kill another person is it's stupid. I don't really get why some people are supporting. Like, to be honest, like I really don't understand why some people are supporting them because you seen someone like it's like you've seen I'm paying every UK like here an American. Bro, America is not gonna take it lightly. Like that's the truth. And I don't really know why people are trying to like paint it and make it feel like see let's call it spade a spade. If this was American and UK, like, let's be honest, the world would be global now, like, because if UK is paying every, if UK is paying their citizens to kill an American, it's going to be bloody, like, America is not going to take something like that. So I really don't expect people to feel like, I really don't understand why people feel like Israel should tolerate that kind of nonsense. But guys, I tell you what you think about that, so if you like, share, subscribe to my channel, I'll see you next time, guys.